Well, they say you can't have it all, but Sheryl Sandberg comes awfully close. At 43, Sandberg, who is a director at Disney, ABC's parent company, is the highly respected chief operating officer of Facebook, putting her net worth in the billions. She's also happily married with two young children, and yet she wants even more, specifically women, to join her in the professional stratosphere. She calls it leaning in, gunning for the corner office, not the cubicle. Here's 2020 anchor Elizabeth Vargas. Cheryl Sandberg is one of the most powerful women in the world. At 43, she's the chief operating officer of Facebook and a billionaire. And you could say she's lonely at the top. Women have been 14% of the top jobs in corporate America for 10 years. 10 years of no progress. Her new book, Lean In, has ignited a firestorm as a sort of feminist manifesto for the sex in the city generation. Do you want to lead? Taking a hard look at the uncomfortable question, why are there still so few women at the top? We're still nowhere close to having our share of the leadership roles in any industry, in any government, anywhere in the world. There was a national retailer, they printed up onesies, mm -hmm. the boys, smart like daddy. The girls, pretty like mommy. Really? It was not in the 1950s. That was two years ago. Lean In's controversial message that when it comes to getting ahead, women can be their own worst enemies. You also talk about an ambition gap. Are you saying that we're not ambitious as women? There are many women out there who are just as ambitious as any men. But if you ask boys and girls, starting in junior high, do you want to lead more males than females at every level say yes. Well, and don't you think that ambitious, when, a, when assigned to a man, is an attractive That's quality? Right. He's ambitious. That's great. The word ambitious for a woman is negative. Sandberg says all this self-sabotage can be traced to what you could call the Sally Field syndrome, that women need to be liked. The fact is, though, in the office, we see that all the time. Men are driven, aggressive, decisive. Women are difficult, bitchy. As a man gets more successful, he is better liked by men and women. And as a woman gets more successful, she is less liked. You also said that Mark Zuckerberg actually told you, you gotta stop worrying about people liking you. And he said, Cheryl, your number one problem is you care too much about being liked and about always pleasing everyone. You're never gonna always please everyone. If you say anything that matters, you're certainly not gonna please everyone. You wrote in the book, I was constantly afraid someone was going to find out that I really wasn't smart enough or good enough to That's be there. That's right. And it still happens to me today. We know that relative to the same level of performance, men feel more confident than women. And what are we doing to our girls that they're not getting the self-confidence as young women? The stereotypes that begin in childhood are enormously self-fulfilling. To make that point, she often tells a story from her own childhood. At my wedding, my brother and sister got on stage and to give a toast, and they said, hi. We're Cheryl's younger brother and sister, David and Michelle. But we're not really her younger brother and sister. We're actually her first employees. <laughs> employee number one and employee number two. Because Cheryl never really played as a child. She more organized other children's play. <laughs> You'll hear the word bossy. Almost never used for a boy. It's used for girls. And as someone who was called bossy for much of my childhood, Trust me, it's not a compliment. At first blush, Sandberg seems like an unlikely poster child for struggle. The eldest of three children raised by a doctor and a stay-at-home mom in Miami, she went to Harvard undergrad and business school. When she was in the sixth grade, she entered a, um, an oratory contest. And she was so small, because she was young, that they had to put a box for her to stand on so they could see her over the podium. And she went on to, to win second place. The person who won was in high school. After Harvard, Sandberg became an early protege of former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers, eventually becoming his chief of staff at the age of 27. But instead of staying in Washington, she took a risk on what was then a small search engine, a little thing called Google. You're going to find something you love doing, and you're going to do it with gusto. Perhaps ironically, it's the web that made her an accidental icon when a pair of speeches starting in 2010 went viral. Because no one gets to the corner office by sitting on the side, not at the table. Your speech at the TED conference has had two million yeah. YouTube views. Until three years ago, I'd never talked about being a woman ever. 
I did what <laughs> everyone did. You never talk about being a woman. People might notice you're a woman. A woman. If the image of a female boss is the coldly dismissive Miranda Priestly in The Devil Wears Prada, which exposed the exploitation of Sandberg goes out of her way to be the opposite, a bundle of energy who never stops moving. Enjoy these. And greets people with hugs, not handshakes. Thank you all. I'm so In addition to the book, she's launching what she calls lean-in circles, groups of women who meet regularly to talk about challenges, like negotiating their own salaries. You didn't do such a great job initially when it came to negotiating for yourself with Mark Zuckerberg. Absolutely. I was dying to get this job. And when he made the first offer, I thought it was fair, and I was about to take it, gratefully. And then it was my brother-in-law who said to me, what, are you kidding? No one takes the first offer. Go negotiate. And I said, well, if I negotiate, maybe he won't like me, maybe I won't get the job, it won't work out. And he said to me, why are you going to take this job and make less than any man would take? And that was motivating. Perhaps not surprisingly, the book has planted Sandberg firmly in the white-hot center of the never-ending debate over women in the workforce and mommy wars, with much of the criticism coming from other women. I want to read to you some of the criticisms. Everyone agrees that Sheryl Sandberg is wickedly smart, but she's also been lucky and has had powerful mentors along the way. Fair or not? I've been really lucky, and I think with that comes not just the opportunity, but the responsibility to help other women. I because in your been. book you say, it's funny, you don't hear a lot of people <laughs> saying a man is lucky. So when a man is successful at something and asked why, he'll attribute that success to his own skills. When a woman is successful, she will attribute that success to luck, help from others. It sounds like you're telling women to act more like a man. <laughs> I'm not telling women to act more like a man. I am telling women that we need to believe in ourselves. Fine. Others say Sandberg is simply too privileged to preach. You're amazingly rich. You can afford help that most people, the vast majority of people, can't afford. It's one thing to say, lean in and work harder when you're sitting in your seat than in a lot of other people's seats. I have resources other people don't have, and I think that gives me the responsibility to speak out for women. This is about the fact that women make 77 cents to the dollar for men. Yeah, yes. Yes. But Sandberg says we also have to ask men to do more at home. Um, perhaps easier said than done. I mean, I'm in a marriage, and I'd love my husband to pony up 50% of the housework and child caring, but it just doesn't work out that way. It's hard. Getting to balance is hard. I feel guilty all the time. I beat myself up for all the things I don't do. My husband, who spends the same amount of time with his kids as I do, he thinks we're heroes. Just heroes. We get home at dinner most nights for our kids. We drive them to school. So we experience things totally differently. So, does Sandberg plan to lean in even further? There is much speculation that she could soon run for office. And though she denies it, there is another woman she'd like to see put her hat in the ring. So, do you hope Hillary Clinton runs for president? Yes, I do. I hope Hillary Clinton runs for president. And wins? And wins. You know, one of the reasons I wrote Lean In is my daughter, four years old, we, get, we had a tape of all the presidents. She said, Mommy, why are they all boys? If Hillary Clinton becomes president, my daughter will not ask me that question anymore, and that is so important. A future generation where no one may notice the president is wearing a skirt. I'm Elizabeth Vargas for Nightline in New York. Indeed. Lean In is in bookstores now.